It's nice and fun and all as a story, but if somebody pissed Matilda off in about five years when she gets real hormonal, she's Carrie. She can just instantly turn into Carrie. Anytime. <laughs>we do today i'm glad you asked what's up guys it's pie man and today we're doing another in the series of our rule dial fan casts okay it's another one i know you've been looking requesting things like the twits george's marvelous medicine i am getting to these i will get to them i'm also kind of wondering like you know like my problem is all right now just, let me take a second my problem is like those will be, some of those videos will be quite short okay some of those there's not much to them you know i could cast the whole family of roly poly birds and twits but that's still seven characters at most but like george marvel's medicine there's like four characters you know so i will i will do them all though um but this this week we're looking at matilda which has already had a film in 1996 starring mara wilson and it was written i think directed and starred danny devito who is he just did it marvelously didn't he, he did some great work for that um so today we're going to take a little look um obviously you know Obviously, if her book was written today, you know, it'd be like her running from the government agency trying to track her down for her powers or something. But back then, it was just a nice, fun thing. And the film originally was about, you know, government agencies trying to track down her dad for illegal activities. They just ignored her. So, who could play the excellent role in Matilda if it was done today? Well, I got a few ideas about that. Here is my fan cast for Matilda. Matilda is pretty young, and that means the normal kind of child actors we go for, for fan casting purposes, they're not going to cut it, okay? It's crazy to think, but the kids from It, Stranger Things, they're all approaching 18 or already there. So, God, God, I've got to, like, switch to a whole new wave pretty soon of like children to fan cast fortunately there's always new ones coming through and i've got a great idea for matilda i think samara lee should play her she was the star of annabelle creation and i was i was shocked it was like a big step up from the first annabelle film because they used these great child actors instead you know as the main people running from this doll you know i always think that's better i talked about that in my ranking of the country films it's always so much better when it's a doll horror film having kids be the ones like the main characters and it worked superbly because samara lee was so good next miss honey is just a really goddamn lovely person how many characters are so uniquely pure are there in all of cinema you know there is nobody as wonderfully kind as miss honey okay she is the epitome of loveliness and joy in all things good especially to matilda who she just loves she's such a great teacher to her and later a little bit more that sounded that sounded creepy a motherly figure if you will okay and then it all ends happily for the both of them because of course it does it's a children's book i mean roald dahl's not that savage except when he's having children feed horrible poison to their grandmothers what yeah i've got to mention that every time every time i do one of these i'm sorry it's just such a it's just such a funny thing to think about i think the only person who could really capture miss honey and how just goddamn so lovely she is is Amanda Seyfried. Oh, I love Amanda Seyfried. I'm shocked because, I don't know, I in my head she's been around since Mamma Mia, so she's been around for 12 years, so you kind of expect her to be like late, mid-30s. She's only about 30 now, because she was like 18 when they filmed the first Mamma Mia. And that's, you know, that's a pretty good age to be playing Miss Honey, but also, she's so lovely. Amanda Seyfried's so lovely. As Sophie in Mamma Mia, as she played Daphne in the new Scoob film, and she was so lovely in that. That's why they made Daphne in that, like, like her main trait was like uh, like an empath you know that was her main thing in that movie because it's amanda seyfried voicing her who's just got such a lovely voice it's just so lovely she's so lovely all the time not the time she played a porn star what who brought that up no no don't bring that up <laughs> not the time she was playing chloe oh no god that was creepy miss honey amanda seyfried perfect next matilda's family are just terrible people to the degree that if I was casting this, say, 10 years ago, I'd have just cast the Dursleys from Harry Potter. You could, okay? You could, if you wanted, just bring Danny DeVito back as the father. I know. 
He's like 70, 80. Ridiculous that he'd be playing Matilda's Father Knight. I wouldn't care. I'd still let him do it, okay? I love Danny DeVito. He's so good in that role. It was great. However, if you wanted somebody else who could be equally kind of this shady character while also being quite funny about how like shitty he is i'd say michael keaton yes michael keaton is so good as the shady father figure okay no offense to michael keaton he's a wonderful actor i love the guy but <laughs> this sounds awful he is like the epitome right now he looks like the epitome of the bad father okay as for matilda's mother zinnia wormwood right zinnia didn't, no idea. I, I couldn't have told you that. <laughs> Zinnia. Anyway, I think mm, it's another interesting one, and I'm going to cast another person who you could just take as the epitome of a bad mother-looking figure. It's Lisa Kudrow. <laughs> because she's so good. I think just since, like, the end of Friends, for the last, like, 16 years, she's been playing roles that are essentially these weird, hilarious, quirky sometimes mean middle-aged women that's just what she does now she's been doing it for so long and a lot of them are like bit roles where she's just so funny but like there's something there's sometimes more like when she played recently the mother in space force who was quite a bad mother figure being in prison the whole time that is that is what she is great at you know she's so good at that kind of thing she'd be she'd be very funny kind of zinnia more so than the original film was i don't recall her being like much of a character really anyway finally you need michael wormwood because as yeah again he's not like a huge role really in the context of the film when you think about it but you could definitely expand upon his role and make him a bit funnier just funny how dumb he is again you know something like that to me ah yeah, I think Julian Dennison from Deadpool 2 would be great at this role. He, you know, I was talking about child actors, not being child actors anymore. He's already, I think, 17. But that doesn't matter. He looks young, and I don't know what age Michael really was in the original film. But it, Julian Dennison's just proven that he can be this, like, funny but annoying kid. He did that in Deadpool 2. He's going to be in Godzilla vs. Kong upcoming, so he's got all the star power he could want. He was in Hunt for the Wilder People as well. Great stuff. Next. Okay, now that's taken care of. Let's cast another child. I... Ooh, Bruce Bogtrotter is a little shit, isn't he? He's a little shit, okay? But you still, no matter what, feel sorry for him when he's made to eat that chocolate cake. That is brutal. Miss Trunchbull's a monster. We'll get there. Anyway... <laughs> Bruce needs to be somebody with a bit of comedic chop about him as well. Though, right, I literally cast this guy as the fat kid last week, okay, with Charlie and Chocolate Factory. But I'm going to say Bruce should be played by Archie Yates from Jojo Rabbit. He's so good. I love him, okay? He was fantastic at Jojo Rabbit. And I just feel like, again, here, it's the kind of role, and he's not, like, it's so mean, because he's not, like, Fat, okay, <laughs> but I've cast him twice in a row, week to week, um, as the fat kid. But Bruce, like, he's just you, you, you really want to feel sympathetic for him. And Archie, it's got he's so cute and he's so funny that you would just feel so it would be heart wrenching when he's made to eat the cake, you know. And it's such a victorious fist pump moment when he makes it. Um, and Archie, it's is just he's got the you know acting chops and proven that he can actually, you know act as opposed to like child act you know in my mind he's, you know, there's a difference next before i get to the big finale here it's worth mentioning that even if he doesn't return as the father again danny devito should absolutely return as the narrator if they wanted one again okay just i've there, there are other film roles i'm kind of leaving out here i'm aware but like in the context of the film like the narrator was pretty cool to have and danny devito being the narrator was marvelous so that should if they do it that should be him again Next. Finally, we need Miss Trunchbull. Hard to recast. It's hard to recast. There are not many tall female actors that are very well known out there, are there? There's not. There's just not. They don't get roles that often. And if if nothing else, the film Tall Girl on Netflix showed us why. Because, you know, when they do get roles, they're garbage. <laughs> But that's not fair to say. But in general, there are not a huge number I can think of of, like, tall actresses out there. And not only does Miss Trunchbull need to be tall, she needs to be physically imposing, intimidating, 
fuck? Frightening, man, okay? Just downright, ah! But I have an idea, and it seems a little dodgy. It seemed a little dodgy to me at first as well, but as I thought about it more, I went, yeah, you know what, that could work. I think Miss Trunchbull should be played by Gwendolyn Christie. That's right. Brienne of Tarth is not exactly the evil, you know, intimidating monster that you'd want for Miss Trunchbull. But Gwendolyn Christie also, she's done Captain Phasma in Star Wars, where she was intimidating, where she proved her voice can be a lot scarier. And in general, she's tall, she's she's par she's well built, you know? And she's just great. She's just great, you know? And has played like a wide variety of other kinds of roles where she's just great. And I have no doubt that if you put her in the role of Miss Trunchbull, she'd be pretty terrifying. I think she'd be pretty terrifying, yeah. Do you want to see Matilda even brought to life modern day as a reboot, or are you just like, nah? <laughs> Leave that alone, okay? Let me know wh who you'd prefer or if you liked these choices in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe down below to never miss another fancast, one minute review, quick list, etc. And also fear Miss Trunchbull until the day you die. Please subscribe. Bye.